Hallelujah. James 1. If we can read from verse 13. From verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person, person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death gives birth to death if you can write down please and go through it as a as a theme what comes from where tell you and ask your neighbor what comes from where I cannot do a summary now for the sake of time with James 1 the first few verses verse 1 to 12 but you know it started off with when you fall into various trials and temptations count it all joy talking about your attitude what will you be your attitude right through everything the joy of the Lord is your strength and because you know you will grow when you stand firm in temptation when you stand firm in trial what will happen is you will grow from strength to strength strength glory to glory through Christ Jesus amen, amen. and so in that sense let's look further from this verse to be tempted God is saying it's not coming from him so my brother you are connected with hell and you are connected with heaven through your spirit you are connected with heaven and the Holy Spirit when you gave your life to Christ your the Holy Spirit testified in your spirit that you are a child of God and the Holy Spirit in your spirit crying out Abba Papa and from there the Holy Spirit will be working in you because in your spirit that is perfect still immature in the beginning but still perfect the Holy Spirit will bring up that what is from God as we see in the word God says we have the mind of Christ amplified we do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of God where in your spirit you have the feelings of God the purposes of God you are connected with heaven but we see later also in James that your tongue can be connected with hell. Set a light with a fire from hell. In that what you say, in that what you can do. Now the, the question would be what will you do with the connection? What is coming from where? And you need to know to understand that. Because I can do something tomorrow and I can say yes, that's a, I believe I'm doing this from the Lord. But the whole initiative was not from God. It's through my flesh, actually, from the enemy. And so I can waste a lot of life by not understanding where I am connected with what. Let's go. What do we say? Blessed is the one who perseveres. That's verse 12. And if you take from that, you can walk with a blessing from God as you walk in victory, as you love him. But when tempted no one should say god is tempting me for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire let's start with that first point evil desire you can write that down evil desire my brother my sister in your flesh and through your flesh that you will be with until jesus come again evil desires will come forth you say, no, I'm just stressed, I'm, I'm in fear, or I'm, just, I, this, I'm negative in this. It comes like a desire. And even this evil desire is not, first of all, just lust, or I want to kill someone, or I want to steal. This evil desire is bringing destruction in me. And at the end of the day, it's going to lead to death. It wants to destroy me. Thy, that's why it is evil. At the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's things that I think that could be good, but at the end of the day it's evil. Because it's from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There's not half of the tree that is great and half of the tree that is not great. <laughs> it has the same root. And you can have something good in your life 
But you, and you can have something evil and you don't understand you are fighting this evil but you are, the, you are fighting the other half of the tree you are at the wrong tree you need to be at the tree of life not at the tree of knowledge of good and evil and there you will always be in performance trying to get things right it's not going to work but I must understand in my flesh, in your flesh there's evil desires and that evil could be even just stress, anxiety, fear hello? Rejection, I feel rejected. I compare myself with others and I feel rejected. And then through counseling, yes, there can come restoration, there can come healing. But I need to acknowledge that that is evil. That thing is evil, it wants to destroy my, the life that is in me. The quality life that God has given you. This thing is evil and you need to name it. Hello. And with that... It says, with that evil desire, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire. I need to own it up that this desire can drag me away. And to be dragged away is, I surrender to it. That I'm dragged away by the evil desire. I'm dragged away by the stress. I'm dragged away by the fear. I'm dragged away by the anxiety, I'm dragged away by jealousy, by inferiority, dragged away by lust or by pride or by whatever thing. I'm dragged away by it. I'm giving it authority. I'm giving over to it. Normally either it's a corpse or it's somebody that is surrendering to that thing. That's why you not stand, stand according to Ephesians 6. We need to stand firm. Stand firm and we have a warfare and there's a war not against flesh and blood, but against the evil spirits Hello. and principalities. So in that context, instead of standing, when that evil desire comes, I can surrender to it by l allowing it to drag me away. That's number two in the temptation. Tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. That's number three enticed that is when you start to be captivated when it's taking a hold of you enticed is now i'm so quickly aware of the stress i'm so quickly aware of the anxiety i'm so quickly aware of jealousy i'm so quickly aware of inferiority i'm so quickly aware of all these other stuff because actually i am enticed why because i was dragged away into this thing why? Because I didn't recognize that desire that was evil. Instead of on the other side, one thing I've decided, one thing I will seek. To stand in your presence and to behold who you are. Put your desires in prayer before the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart if you understand the process how to bring it before God. But there's other desires that could even look good. And sometimes it's evil because it's it's deceiving you because it looks good and the evil is not the fact that it looks it's really bad no <laughs> it's evil because it's coming like an angel of light it's evil because it can so deceive you and the evil lies in the fact that it can so easily deceive you are you with me that I can think you can think it's okay to go with the stress, to go with the negativity, to go with judgment, to go with unforgiveness, to, to go with the thing of, I have an issue with somebody and I must go and sit and sort out the issue. First of all, it's rubbish. Because the issue is between you and God. Because I have an issue with somebody, if I have a relationship with God, God says, you forgive and you bless and you give grace and you don't, uh, don't judge and you don't get bitterness. Why? Because you have a relationship with God. Not first of all because you have a relationship with a person. Go and stand at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then it is when that person acknowledged that he was wrong. Then everything is settled. That's at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Where only the snake can say amen to what you do. But I can be set free. I can have freedom in me. Why? Because Christ is in me. That I don't hold it against that person then I'm not enticed where I am focusing on that thing, where I'm so quickly aware of that thing in my life. 
May God help you. May God help me. In Jesus' name. Are you here? Amen. Tempted. Dragged away by the evil desire and enticed. Then, after that desire has conceived. Conceived. What are we talking about? There's the evil desire. I'm giving, surrendering it so that he can drag me away. I'm enticed. I'm focusing on it. And it becomes a seed in me that are birthed in me. It became a seed that can be birthed in me. The opposite, the opposite, the word talks about the incorruptible seed. Eh? When you receive the incorruptible seed in your heart, reborn. You became a child of God. Your spirit became reborn when you received the incorruptible seed of the word. The word will not return void to God. It will bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold harvest through your life. If you respect it and allow it to work through you. But the problem is when I receive this evil desire, I surrender to it. I'm dragged away. I'm enticed, focusing on it. And it brings a seed in me. Where that temptation, that bitterness become a seed in me that just going to grow. Devil is not stupid. He's not going to leave you alone when you give him something. You give him something, he's going to drag you into much more than just something. And it becomes a seed. And it becomes a seed. When? When? This desire, how does he say? Or after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that is only when we come to sin. Sin, that means you miss the mark. That what stands now between you and God. That what stands between you and God. Now you have this thing between you and God. Called sin. Going on. And when it is full ground, that's number five. Number four was, are you you writing down, hey, the first one is the evil desire. Then you're dragged away. Then you are enticed. Then the desire conceive. Number four. Number five is giving birth to sin. Giving birth to sin. And when it is full grown, what does that mean? That's number six. The sin will grow. The sin will not be, there's some sin in my life and that's all. No, sin is not stupid. It will grow. Because it attracts demons. Because for the demon, oh, that's my type of guy. Because what you do is a type of thing that demon will do. So that's my type of guy. Now God says in his word, don't have fellowship with demons. That is, I can be a child of God, but I'm walking with demons. I'm walking with my bitterness. I'm walking with my issues. I'm walking with my things that I keep against people. I'm walking with my rejection. I'm walking with my fear, my anxiety, my stress. My, I'm walking with it. And it's not just about seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist. About it. Not just getting some medicine. Yes, that's also good if it can help you and it must serve the purpose so that you can come to the place of taking the truth and that the truth will set you free. Because that thing will not set you free, that person will not set you free, that doctor cannot set you free, but the truth will set you free. So what you ever go, where you ever go for, for help in your situation, make sure that it's a servant to the truth. Amen. May God help you. May God help us. He will give birth to sin. And when it is full grown, when this bitterness is growing so much in your life, it's not just evident. It's, it's coming through in your words. It's coming through in your attitudes. It's coming through in the way you see things. It's coming through in your conversations. It's coming through. That thing is, that's coming through, that negativity is coming through everywhere. Then, it's full grown. It gives birth to death. That's point number seven. It gives birth to death. What death is this now? You have nothing to say. There's no voice of you. There's no life of God speaking in and through you. All that you can talk about. The the only thing alive in you is the bitterness or the rejection or the negativity or the issue or the stress or the anxiety, the lust, the pride or the inferiority or whatever. 
That's the only thing alive in you. It gives birth to death. So, so sin is the enemy is not stupid. Hello. He knows there's a connection that you can have with hell. Chapter 3. Your tongue be lit up from the fire of hell. And that what you bring out of your mouth like fire from hell. Enemy knows there's a connection. Till the day Jesus, you stand before Jesus. He knows he has some hope to bring death in you. Because there's still a connection with hell. You will not be able not to access hell. Hell will be always accessible till you die. With the flesh that I have to walk with. And that's wherefore I need God. I need God. I need to be dependent on Him. I need humility. I need to be dependent on Him. I need to take His hand to lead me through. Are you with me? Through that valley, through that wilderness, through the desert. He didn't promise it will not be there. He, he promised He will lead you through. Hey, we all know that one. So my brother, my sister, this is now what is from where. And you need to identify what is in you. And what I'm busy with now, what I'm thinking about, what my emotions is saying, what I'm uh, hovering about, what I meditate on. This is from where. It's from hell or from heaven. It's from one or the two. And ask Holy Spirit, I'm now connected to what? But if you don't come to know the word, you will never learn that sensitivity to realize this is not from heaven. Because why? This is not according to the word. Because maybe you emotionally can go through such a thing that it's difficult to feel what you feel in your spirit. What is God's emotions that's in my spirit? But you are secure in the word. And if you know the word, you'll know this is not the type of talk that Jesus will have with me. This is not the type of joke that he will laugh for. This is not the type of movie or the type of music he will listen to. So, entertain that. What? You are dragged away through that evil desire into that music. Oh, it's, it's not evil. They're not swearing at Jesus. They're not singing about the devil. They're not singing about lust and rubbish. Ask Holy Spirit. I'm not saying you're not allowed to do any worldly music in the sense of it must just be gospel. I'm saying you need to hear from Holy Spirit. That's what I'm saying. But evil desire many times is because it does not look evil. It looks good. <laughs> and that is sometimes the most evil. <laughs> because it's so clever. It's a bad thing that is so clever. That is truly evil. <laughs> Are you with me? Evil desire. I surrender to it, dragged away, enticed, I focus on it. Hello? And then it becomes a seed in me, gives birth to sin. When sin grows, it brings in me death. And I'm walking, dead man walking. <laughs> Where I still go to heaven, yes. But what I've done on earth will be burnt away because nothing has eternal value. There will no eternal life in what I've built. So that's a death. But now, how on earth do you get on the other side? The cross. Only the cross. Only the cross. I will boast in the cross, nothing else, because nothing can set me free from this road of death. That's why you find Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. I am dead to sin. Why? I no longer live. He lives in me. But you're not ghost sitting here. It's about the attitude. It's about your faith. By faith, Christ is living through you. You consider yourself dead to sin. Dead. You cannot tempt the corpse. The corpse. You cannot tempt the dead body. Hello? So, when the devil comes to you and the temptation comes to you, you must come to, oh, the, the, this, this corpse, they will, nothing will happen with this corpse. No, it's not possible. I've been crucified with Christ, I no longer live. And in that place of death, death that doesn't lead to destruction, but death that leads to life. Because if I'm dead and crucified with Christ, I will be raised with Christ so that I can now live by faith with Christ. 
and experience the life that is from him. So I must know what is from there and what is from underneath. But there's an agenda from hell to make sure that you have death in your life today. That tomorrow you will not walk with the life of Christ. You well, we can go to heaven. But the life, it will be a struggle with this enticement, with this surrender, with this seed of sin, with this growing of sin next to you. Break your covenant with those stuff. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God will help you then. Verse 16. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. A few times in the book of James, he's addressing deception. He's addressing the deception. And in that, in this part, I'm still saying, understand what is from above, what is from beneath. Understand what is from above. Hello. Now, after he talked this whole process of what is from hell, actually, what is from your flesh connected with hell. Verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Everybody say above. above. Okay. Coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. When you see a shadow, just remember, my God, there's no shifting shadow in you. No shifting shadow in you. Hello. But in that, how am I protected in that place? First of all, thankfulness. That you acknowledge God as the giver of everything that is good in your life. Remember to acknowledge Him. Remember to appreciate that it was from Him. Remember the appreciation, the thanksgiving that comes from a place of humility. When you humble yourself, He will lift you up. In, in, with Peter, Apostle Peter and with James. They address the church talking about submit yourself to God. Humble yourself. He will lift you up and then resist the devil and he will flee from you. With this, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But the process is I humble myself. I lay my life down through the cross. Get the right attitude. And then I will not be deceived. And in that place, what I have is only because of His grace. Your victory, your success, your finances, your excellence in business, your what, your your wisdom, your your capacity, your your giftings, your your skill, whatever that is excellent, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. Receive it with thankfulness and knowing what is ever is good in my life is only from Him. Cannot be from myself because in myself there's a a desire, there's a flesh that can bring forth evil desires lit up from hell. Know what is from above, know what is from beneath. Every good, perfect gift from above. Then verse 18, he chose to give us birth. Oh, now he's talking about birth again. Talked about being birthed, sin being birthed. And then death being birthed. In me and through me and with me. Now here, he says, but God in his grace, he chose. Let's say God chose. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth. Okay. We talked about the seed. Once again, he is seed. The word of truth as a seed in me. God chose that I will be birthed in his kingdom. Birthed reborn as a child of God when you receive the word as a seed as the truth and say God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son so that I will not perish but have eternal life those who accept him he gives the right to become children of God I take that seed incorruptible seed and just like that God is he just did it through his spirit through the word of truth God chose to say if you receive that word I will forgive all your sins and your eternal destiny will change and we will have relationship. The biggest miracle and grace over your life. The fact that you become a child of God. But tomorrow as a child of God. Not just rebirth. Tomorrow when you receive the word of truth in your situation. It will birth forth life. It will birth forth life. Tomorrow next week birth forth life. There's just this womb that opens up and bringing. Not like that. You know. Some, some married ladies. <laughs> birth forth life 
this womb that will birth forth life every week. And for that, what is next year, there will be more life. Why? Because you take the seed, the word of truth, as a seed. But seed will work in you. The seed of the flesh to bring forth sin and death. Or the word of truth will work in you to bring life and life in abundance and life eternal. But it will work. It will accomplish for what it was sent for. And now just unfortunately, as God says in Isaiah 55, the word that I sent forth, it will accomplish what I sent it for. It will not return void back to me. So the enemy, unfortunately, also puts that seed in you. If you take, don't take it out, it will accomplish that what hell has sent it for in your life. Hell will accomplish its mandate in your life unless you take that seed out. The word says to Corinthians, take every thought captive to obedience to Christ. And therefore, by God's grace, my brother and my sister, stand strong. Stand strong. Amen. Are we with one another? He chose to give us birth through the word of truth so that me, we may be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Of all he created. That's why we are called the crown of creation. And if you allow this process to receive the seed, not just on the day when you gave your life to Christ, but after that, the seed of truth to set you free so the truth can live in you and life more and more and more. Then you will start to live as the crown of creation. What does that mean? You have authority over creation. That means you're not a product of your circumstance, but circumstance must change because of you. And then we talk about Romans 8 again. I know you all of this, uh, you know all of this, but just take it. And if you must write down, write down. Romans 8, that everything is suffering, is groaning, like in childbirth, waiting for the revelation, for the revealing of the sons of God, for the children of God that will mature, that will get over their own issues, so that they can mature and liberate creation, so that where they go, creation, circumstances, environment change because of their presence, and not the Christian change because of their circumstance and the presence of intimidation now the Christian, now I'm depressed, now I'm this, now I'm stressed, now I'm down, now I'm negative, now I'm in judgment, now I have an issue of someone. And circumstances, your environment will determine who you are. Sure. Until I choose to grow up. And then environment will change because of my connection with heaven. Sons of God, through the Son of God, that will liberate creation. That will bring freedom to Bluefontein. We will bring freedom in education where you're involved with. Freedom there at the army. Freedom wherever you work. Freedom in business. Freedom in politics, wherever you're involved with. That the freedom of God will come because of your presence. Because you got over yourself to grow up in Christ to be a son of God. God will help us. Amen. So that was the whole passage about first what is from hell, what is from heaven. And you need to understand what is from above, what is from here. Because my, my purest ambition for Christ could be from hell. Because it's my idea. It's my idea. So my purest ambition, nobody will kill you, Jesus. Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. To the man that just committed his life and said, I will give my life for you, Jesus. That's Peter, the apostle. <laughs> but the agenda was not according to God's plan. What he heard was not from God, it was actually from hell. And that's why God to stop what was coming through Peter, the apostle man, after all these years with Christ. And Jesus he said, no, what you're saying now is connected with hell. Break it. Allow Holy Spirit to show you what in you, with a nice attitude, even with a nice desire, could be connected, not from heaven, but with hell. 
see what is from heaven see what is from hell and then you will be able to count it all joy when you fall in various trials because you will walk out victorious 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 and you will appreciate the good gifts that is from above because god is not saying i promise you i will give you gifts that is like in this passage it's an obvious he's just explaining that every good gift is from him that's what he's saying Acknowledge him, honor him, be thankful. Amen. So then the next point. In the midst of everything that is, I could be connected with heaven, but I also can be connected with hell. Hell is accessible. Heaven is accessible. What must I do? And then the whole next 10 scriptures. He, after laying this further foundation, he's building on that and he's talking about listening and doing. It's about hear and obey. I'm going to give you 10 very small points, I believe, short points, about hear and obey. Now, first of all, everybody say, meh. Hopefully you could say that because then you're a sheep. We are sheep. And Jesus said in John, John 10, my sheep knows my voice. You're not a pig. You're not a whatever, a goat. But if you gave your life to Christ, you know his voice. The problem is how to distinguish his voice. It's not how to hear his voice, but how to distinguish his voice. Because there's too many other voices of the flesh and of this and of the world. And then all the voices of the stuff is I allow to start to walk with me. Fellowship with fear, fellowship with anxiety, fellowship with negativity, fellowship with all these other stuff that I need to break because they are bringing death and death and death and death and suddenly you don't have that passion to worship anymore not you know one of you experienced it ever and that passion to worship God is not there you're not the word is not you're not experiencing that life is coming when you hear the word it feels like a law but what is giving life to you what is causing some some excitement in you Evaluate yourself. Don't take on the nation, but get out of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. And one of the major, major, major keys to, to get out of that is acknowledge the voice from heaven and not the voice from hell. Not the voice through your flesh, because your flesh is like this. One second, and he can hear the voice from hell. Just like this. Your flesh. But you know... When you have grown in your spirit, it's just like this. You can hear the voice of God. Are you with me? Are you with me? My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. You can write there, quick to listen. A lady that's sleeping, maybe you must ask her also to write it down. You can wake her up now. Okay, good morning. You can write also. <laughs> uh, just take the elbow off. And then you can trust the Lord to stay awake. Hallelujah. I know the word of God brings peace. Um, <laughs> first of all, in hearing God's voice, in hearing God's voice, quick to listen. Everybody say quick to listen. Quick to listen. Oh man, the problem is we can be so quick to listen about our own opinion and our own strong heart and a, and a thing that I'm acquainted to. So quick to listen to, to all these other stuffies. But I must be so alert and quick to listen and hear God's word. That's why I push myself into the word of God. Hello? Because the more I come to know his word, the quicker I am to understand it's God speaking. That's his type of language. And you can recognize his type of language because you know the word. But if you don't know the language, you're not quick to understand what's coming to you. You're not quick to understand. But unfortunately, we know the language of a lot of other stuff in our lives. And we can be quick in that. But quick to listen. I'm quick first to understand. I need God. I need His voice. I need to live from His voice. I need to hear what He's saying. And that's where prayer, 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 prayer is positioning so that you can learn how to be quick to listen. Hello. As you wait on God, you become sensitive to his voice, to his heart, to his presence. 
God will help you, God will help me. Be still and know. Become still. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. That does not mean. That is not that slow to speak. Okay, it is just first be quiet. First be quiet. Ah, uh, well, what are we talking about? Okay, a lot of guys, I mean, even like Peter, this man, he said a lot of stuff. We first had to think before he said it. You find Job for 30, how many chapters? He's quick to speak. He has a lot of things to say, a lot of things. And because he's struggling through something. And you can struggle through something and you have a lot of things to say. But when he saw God and God spoke to him, God arrested him. At the end of the day, he said, I will be silent because I spoke of things too high. Too high for me to attain. Too high for me to even grasp, to put together. I cannot even put this together. Who God is and his awesome grace and his awesome love and his heart and every. It's difficult for me to express in words, to put it together. I spoke of things I actually know nothing about. Oh, and he could hear God's voice. And then he could hear God's voice. And he said, I will sit. Please, Lord, come and teach me. God will help us in Jesus' name. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. That's number three. You had, no, point number two was slow to speak. Number three, slow to become angry. What are we talking about? Oh, come on, my brother, my sister. First of all, if you not make a decision to be quick to listen, and then secondly, if you don't, you can have that desire, you make the decision, but if you still speak like whatever, some other parrot, there's no, even you had the right decision, I'm quick to listen, God, I want to hear you, but then please stop speaking, tell your flesh to shut up, hello, so that you can be in that place to have respect for when he speaks. To have respect for when he speaks. Because he's not respectful when he's speaking to you. But you are walking around with other stuff and allow them to have a voice. Ignoring actually God's voice. And we don't do it deliberately. But we do deliberate allowing bitterness to speak to us. Or our reasoning. We can, you know, uh, when we get into Christianity even more and religion. Oh man, people can reason. The guys who had a lot of reasoning in their heads, Pharisees, Sadducees, where to put what? They don't agree with it, I agree with that. Be careful, be careful with something where you say, no, I'm sensing in my spirit. But meanwhile, you are just busy with your own reasoning because you want to be in control and you are only at peace when you are in control. Amen. Only two of you sitting here where somebody maybe called you a control freak in the past, but no, not anymore. But remember the days, you know, by way back. Because I feel at peace when I'm in control, when I understand. Yeah. But God is not going to give me this understanding. He's going to give me the understanding of truth so that I understand his heart. Not understand everything he does. You will never understand it. Everything that he does. It's impossible. Because you didn't create him. He created you. He's not going to fit in your brain and your understanding. Are you with me? But if I must stand and understand with my brain, it's because I need to be in control. I don't say that. But I think that's faith. I can step out in faith when I understand everything. No. <laughs> step out is faith is because you understand his heart. That is good. I know the plans that I have for you. And he's speaking that God through the prophet to Israel that doesn't understand what on earth is happening. And God is saying, understand my heart. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying. Understand my heart for your life. And know the thoughts that I have for you. The plans that I have for you. Hope and the future. Go by faith. And go for the heart of your father, please. Amen. Amen. Okay. Where are we now? Number four. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, number four. Get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. The evil, the evil and moral filth. All this rubbish. Get rid of the rubbish. Let's say, I will get rid of the rubbish. 
and all evil. Okay, and that's what we talked about just now before this, hey? So I can get rid of the evil, I can get rid of the rubbish, if what? If first of all, you are quick to listen so that the word of God can, in you and the, can come in you, and the word of God can deal with the evil and the rubbish. Don't have the word in you, you're going to, in the flesh, try to deal with the, with the rubbish and the evil. It's not going to work. Even if you try to step out in faith and you have a right desire to get rid of all the evil and the rubbish, it's not going to work because, first of all, you must hear God's strategy. So, be quick to listen and hear from God. But for that, also be slow to speak. You don't have all the wisdom. Make sure you, you don't speak unless God is saying to you. Unless you know it's, a, it's in line with the word of God in what you say. I'm not talking about preaching all day. I'm talking about in your everyday what comes forth. And thirdly, deal with your emotions. When we talk about the anger, I said there, uh, slow to anger. What you need to add is deal with your emotions. It's actually saying that. Slow to let your emotions just run wild. Quick do. Listen, slow to speak. Third one, get your emotions right. Because you can feel rejected. And we experience it. And when you feel rejected, oh man, can you hear any reason? If somebody is throwing a tantrum, totally unpluff. What is unpluff? Explode. explode. Totally explode. And when that person explodes because of emotional hurt or rejection or emotional... Can that person hear, hello? Oh, there she can take no reason now. Hello. You want to hear God and obey Him? You want to hear God? Get those stuff in line. So that you are more healed and be stable. Okay, that was number three. Deal with the emotions. So that uh, when you deal with the emotions, you are able to get rid of the moral filth and evil desires. Because the moral filth, a lot of that moral filth is because your emotions are in the wrong place. Because you feel rejected. And now you feel rejected. Now you must look at the porn so that you can feel better about yourself. There's no intimacy. Now you think and, and, and fantasize all this rubbish. You cannot get rid of it. If not, first of all, you are quick to receive the word that can cleanse you, that can heal you, that can set you free. And choose to be respectful and to receive what he has. And get your emotions in line so that you really have the capacity to deal with this moral filth and desires. Evil, the evil that can be over you. In Jesus' name. Okay. That evil. So that you can be. So that. Prevalent and humbly you can accept the word planted in you. Number, what's that? Number five. Accept the implanted word. Re this recept, oh, accept the word planted in you. Very interesting. How must you accept? Uh, normally we say you accept the word and then it is planted in you. No, 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 no. This, he, he's saying accept humbly the word that is already planted in you because in your spirit you have the fullness of God hello in your spirit is the mind of Christ we have the mind of Christ do hold the feelings the purposes and the thoughts of Christ according to amplified hey so you have received the word already but you choose to ignore it through pride or through so busy with quick to to speak Quick to get angry. Quick for your emotions to whatever. A little bit slow to really sit, be still before the Lord and to listen. And because of that, I'm struggling with the flesh to get rid of it the whole time. But I find myself in this place. Uh, hello. I find my in this place where I can become even depressed. Why? I think... Where is God? What is He saying? His purposes, His plans, His dream, His perfect will is already in you. But humble yourself for this process. Humble yourself and with a true thankfulness receive the what is already in you. Where? In your soul. In your soul. In your soul. Accept the word planted in you which 
can save you. Oh, man, if the word is already in you, you're already saved. You're not going to hell. No. This is receive in a lot of other translations so that it is able to, to save your soul. Yours, to save your emotions, to save you from the perspectives and the hurts and all the stuffies that happened in your life. To save you from your success, to become your security. To save you in that way. Are you with me? To so please my brother, oh, humility with a gentle spirit. Take what God has given you in your spirit. Hello, focus. Take what God has given you in your spirit and you'll see victory. Receive. Let's say, I receive, I receive. In, my soul, in my soul the word implanted in my spirit. And you can be, your soul can be saved so that you can be saved from your own mindsets, your own emotions, indentations, and all those stuff so that on earth you can have quality eternal life already are you with me okay so receive that so that the next one what was number six and do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do not merely listen and so in that way of just listening deceive yourself you want to deceive yourself? You want to live in deception? Hear this sermon and do nothing with it. Hear this sermon and do nothing with it. So that you can be more deceived when you walk out here. That's why I'm not saying if you don't take notes, you are deceiving yourself. I'm not saying that. Maybe you will listen on the, the teaching again. But if you believe Holy Spirit says you have it, you know it, you will do it, yes. If you don't have it, don't know it yet, and you must build with it, make sure that you receive what God is saying. I mean, many times in Malaysia, when I sit there at the conference, a lot of leaders over the world, and with Dr. Jonathan, my spiritual father, yo, that man can speak. He can speak, he can speak, he can do easily. Ten hours of teaching in a day. And then when you are there for two weeks or for five weeks, yo, 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 yo. And sometimes you must just pray in tongues and say, God, how must I take what? And sometimes just, okay, Lord, I'm taking this by faith. I'm taking that by faith. But hear from God what you hear or what you, how you must respond to the word. Are you with me? Many, 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 many strategies about things, even things on the farm, even with this, even sometimes it happened even with the crosses, with a lot of stuff in the city happened while in teaching and i hear something and god says look at that again about this for the school and i just write there i'm not going to go with it further but find strategy in god's presence find strategy oh god's going to help the, the little one there praise the lord amen, amen. <laughs> so what am i saying may god help us all amen are you with me the one that hear the words and don't obey it, you deceive yourself. And the more you read Bible, please don't read Bible if you're not going to do it. Because you will go more into deception. Please don't speak about God or let people speak to you about God if you're not going to take and do it because you will become more deceived. That is okay to hear and not to do. But that's one word in the Greek and the Hebrew. That's actually one word. It's about, uh, in our Afrikaans and English, you talk about listen to me. In the word listening is hear and obey, actually. That child, he heard what I said, but he didn't listen. He didn't obey. <laughs> Are you with me? So in the listening, it's all together. God sees it as one thing. God believes there's not a thing that they will hear me and not to obey is one concept for God two sides of one coin and if not then you think you walk away with a coin but you got one side you are totally deceived God's gonna help us to be set free from this in Jesus name so what must you do 
that was number six. Don't listen and deceive yourself. But, verse 24. After looking at himself, oh, sorry, sorry, that's the guy that forgets himself because he hears but not obeys. He's talking, you remember that, that, uh, that part? It's the man looking in the mirror and then he walks away, immediately forgets how he looks. Now, your mirror is the word, my brother, my sister. Look into the word of God, who you are. Understand the word of God that says who you are. And then you walk away and you forget who you are. And then your performance and what people say and what people mocked about you and what circumstances say, that you received who you are. I'm a failure because of this. I'm a success because of the success. What people say about you or to you, as if that will determine, that's the guy. And that word you hear and you walk away and remember it. But this is the mirror. Look into the word. And walk away. Remember what the word says. Who you are. Amen. We're going nearly for landing. We are, we are number what? It was number seven. Look intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom. Look into. You can write there. Look into. The law that gives freedom. Look into the law that gives freedom. So how will I not just hear and walk away and I will not obey? I will hear and I will forget. No, 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 no. Look into. What does that mean? See his heart. Not understand everything, but see his heart. See his heart. And remember just his heart is... He has excellent plans for me. He loves me. He has the best for me. He's excited about my future. And that's all you need to understand when you need to receive to go and do what God has called you to do. When you know his heart, you will have insight. Look into. Intensely into. So you make that decision. The perfect law that gives freedom. Number eight. Continue in it, not forgetting what they have heard. You can be so excited about the revelation God gave you. You can be so excited. You have insight in it. And then you start, but you forgot about it. How many people of you, how many of you, you had in the past excellent experiences with God, excellent experiences with the Word, excellent experiences. Uh, how many times can we catch ourselves that we forgot some of that? And sometimes for remember the bad decisions, things that we did wrong, but not so with excitement always, remember the excellence in what God has done in my life. And decisions that you made, you made, that you remember that day, not with pride, not with arrogance, that day that was so precious when you made that decision through the Holy Spirit with God, in the service, in the cell, when praying with someone, there on your own, there with the word. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. It was God who did a precious thing in your life. Cherish it. Cherish it. Don't forget. It says, when you look into, continue in it, not forgetting what you've heard. And then number nine, doing it doing it then in that place you can do it in it will glorify god then what you do god we did we, we drove out the devils we did this we did this jesus said i don't know you i don't know you may god know you and you know god in what you do may god know you in what you do and you know god in what you do this is the type of quality, doing it with him. That's number nine. And the last one. They will be blessed in what they do. They will be blessed in what they do. Blessed that you will just make your ten billion? No. It doesn't say that. But in what you do, there's a happiness. You are happy. The other word in this, for this blessed is, is He's, But it's not uh, with the nine beatitudes when Jesus said every time, blessed are you who do this, blessed are you. When he's explained, he's happy, fortunate, to be envied, are you. And your happiness 
is when you do it with God. Your happiness. So if you are faithful in hearing and obeying, is it not at the end of the day when they will stand before Jesus and Jesus will say, you were entrusted with this faithful servant. You will be entrusted with so much more. God will speak to you, call you by name, by your name. And you will stand before him and he will tell you, good and faithful servant. And then he will say, go into the joy that your master enjoy. Is this blessed? Blessed are they in what they do. Happy they will be. But that happiness is the happiness that God has. Is the joy that he has. So one of the greatest rewards that God's giving you when you are faithful, you're standing before him that day, is that you'll enjoy what he enjoys. But tomorrow, when you are faithful tomorrow, tomorrow night, next week, God wants to reward you with the joy that he enjoys. He wants you to be blessed with what he is blessed. That you know this blessing, going back, is from the Lord. Because every true blessing, true gift, good and perfect gift, is from above. And that's where God wants to take you. He wants the joy and the happiness that he has. He wants it in his son, in his daughter. And if they can walk this road with him, to hear and obey, to know what is from above and what is from beneath, they will experience the fulfillment that he has as your father. He wants you to have the excitement about life, the excitement that he has about your life. God, come and help us. We trust you for that. Come and set us free to hear your voice accurately, Lord. God, you have only, only, only the best for us. And I pray that, you will, that your mercy will be over us. Every man, every woman in this place. Even as we have communion now, Lord. Through communion we come to repent. We want to repent, Lord, and say, forgive us, Lord.